We consider this uh, the most beautiful part of Dallas. What you see are incredible, engaged neighborhoods. I think it's one of the communities in the city with the most pride. We love this area. I mean, Southern Dallas is just like the rest of the city, <laughs> except we're missing some of the supportive things that we need economically. You know, don't believe the press clippings. Really, you have to come and see it for yourself. This is the best time to live in Dallas, but the key is not to celebrate now. It's to make five years from now the, a better time to live in Dallas. The neighborhoods uh, have a huge part to play. I am one of four AmeriCorps VISTA members. We're hired for a year to work with the mayor's initiative out in the community. This is one of two murals that we've worked on. We've also planted trees in a number of neighborhoods, done some flower gardens. This was a local grocery store. We're trying to bring some local businesses back to this area. We have several abandoned buildings. And we're trying to attract young people with families and stuff to move back in the area. And a lot of real estate agents don't even know about the area. You That's know? the point. They don't even show it. The neighborhoods that are going to thrive are the ones that are excited to participate, to work with the city, to work with businesses in the area. Strengthening neighborhoods attracts families who move in and stay here. I love Oak Cliff specifically just for the architecture and the landscaping of the homes. It's a nice community to raise your children in. Wednesday's gonna start her life as a cheerleader for the Oak Cliff Redskins. <laughs> and then she's gonna grow to become a Skyline Varsity cheerleader one day. And she gonna go to Atwell too. She went to Brown. I that went to Brown, he went to Atwell. Those are rival middle school. And I went to Carpenter, he went to Adele Turner. But so. we know Atwell is the better of the two. I never lost to Brown. I just want to throw that in there. I never lost in anything to Brown. Okay. Not even a chess match. Most people didn't suggest looking south, um, but once we came and looked here, it, we, we really loved it. Yeah, people have been so welcoming too. The neighborhood's a great neighborhood. People are really nice and kind, and we feel connected to the community already, and we've only been here for, what, a year and a half, so. We, first of all, got involved in a mentoring program here in the South Dallas Fair Park area. And we put up our house for sale in Plano and uh, started looking for a house here in South Dallas. And everyone was just so uh, welcoming and so warm. We came in thinking, you know, hey, we're going to be, you know, uh, these big heroes and we're going to give back and, and, you know, folks are going to look to us and it, far from it. I think actually the opposite has happened to where we feel like we're blessed by those around us being here. If you spend any time in Southern Dallas, you see an enormous number of dogs walking along the streets. We are really stepping up our presence in Southern Dallas, and it's one of the things that Grow South has really, uh, has, has helped a lot with this year. We're going into targeted areas, the areas that have received the highest number of calls about stray or loose dogs. We are picking up dogs that, that appear to be stray. And the other is we're having an aggressive uh, education campaign where our, our animal control officers are speaking with the residents of those communities to make sure they understand what can they do to help be a solution to the problem. Light is an issue in the southern sector. As part of Grow South, as part of the strategy of a culture of clean, um, we have escalated the number of uh, demolitions that the city performs. Whenever we find properties where the owner is not found, doesn't come forward, unwilling or unable to take care of the, of the blight on their own. Demolishing set a goal with the Mayor's Grow South program of demolishing 250 of these structures a year, and we've been doing a good job of keeping pace with that. Education is the foundation of the future workforce, and Mayor Rawlings understands this with three historic initiatives that he is very proud to support. The Mayor's Summer Reading Club. Just last year, over 160,000 hours was read by adults and children, and the most significant part about it is it actually creates a habit with these children that makes them want to read, and it becomes a lifelong habit. 
The Mayor's Back to School draws about 40,000 kids and their parents to Fair Park. What we're able to do is to give kids in need their school supplies, do their health screenings, we check their eyes, we give them glasses if they need it, we do their immunizations, and cut their hair. So what it allows for a kid to do is go back to school ready to learn. The job that we're looking for. The Mayor's Intern Fellows Program provides high school students an eight-week paid internship in top companies and nonprofits across the city. And many of these students will go on to college and be the first one in their family to go to college. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Who do you who have you interviewed with? Um, Scottish Wright, Baylor, UNT. Okay. And Children who live in high-density poverty suffer from summer learning loss at three times the rate of middle and upper income American children. So the problem that Big Thought is working on with the mayor's office and the school district is alleviating summer learning loss. Grow South has been a great launching pad for increasing access to out-of-school time learning in the southern sector. There are as many as 15,000 kids who are engaging in summer learning and after school and out of school time learning um, through Dallas City of Learning. When a child is not reading proficiently by the end of third grade, they are four times more likely to drop out of school. Reading Partners for 15 years has been bringing community volunteers into elementary schools to work one-on-one -on -one with students kindergarten through fourth grade who are reading below grade level. When you look at our work since the inception of the Grow South program started, uh, we have partnered with 15 elementary schools and we have served a thousand students in South Dallas alone thanks to the support of 800 weekly volunteers. Our goal in DISD is to have 35 choice schools by the year 2020. And essentially what choice schools mean is that they offer specialized academic programming, whether it's Montessori, science technology, dual language, fine arts, um, lots of specialized options that tap into kids' interests, learning styles, and aspirations. We are going to be a school of choice very soon, and our theme is going to be leadership. Which we got is why to we write learned. about free verse, lyrical poems, haiku poems. So at Weiss Elementary School, for instance, kids are doing you know, public speaking. They're building PowerPoint slides. They're writing persuasive essays where they have to support their arguments with evidence. I mean, these are all skill sets of 21st century citizens. KIPP stands for the Knowledge is Power program. It is a national network of public charter schools designed to prepare students to be successful in high school, college, and in life. Here locally, uh, KIPP Dallas-Fort Worth is comprised of four schools serving roughly 1,300 students. Uh, this summer, we are moving out to Pleasant Grove, and our goal is in 2021 to serve 5,000 students in 10 schools, all in Southern Dallas. We're not the only solution. You know, we're one solution of many. And ultimately, you know, we want to be an option for families in a portfolio of educational institutions designed to make sure that kids can live a life where they're choosing and that we at KIPP believe that we do that. The Mayor's Rising Star Council Leadership Academy began three years ago. We've been working with students in four Southern Dallas high schools to be more engaged in their communities and to empower them to know that they have a voice and that change can happen through them. As of today, 100% of them have been accepted to four-year universities for next fall, and that's so exciting. We get 75% of our students from south of Interstate 30 down to Grand Prairie, across the southern suburbs to Mesquite, so, I mean, that's, that's our base. Our base is the same base of Grow South. We have a very clear plan to grow from our 2,500 students to 5,000 in five years. And so just achieving that growth will stimulate a lot of economic development around us. For, for us, we represent the potential and the hope of Grow South in a, in a slightly different way. While some of our students come from the area, what we are really trying to do is be Dallas's great small college. and so. What we want to do is show the sustainability of the Southern sector by creating graduates that stay here, invest here, and help transform here. Uh, because the reality of it is, grassroots transformation is the most sustainable transformation that you can create. 
there are a lot of positive things happening in Southern Dallas, but those stories don't always get told. We wanted to create a tool uh, to tell the stories of the communities and the people in Southern Dallas. We put together a website to change that perception. From the Chamber's perspective, we want uh, the business community, we want companies that are looking at uh, Dallas Fort Worth to consider Southern Dallas as a place to set up shop or people to move to. Uh, we want people to consider uh, the region as, as a great place to operate a business or to live. Southern Dallas has been so underserved for so long. So the hope is that Impact Dallas Capital helps to stimulate growth. That's all we're trying to do. Impact Dallas Capital is a not-for-profit organization uh, designed to increase investment in Southern Dallas. For three years now, we've been working on how to create an infrastructure so that we could support economically development in the Southern sector. One of the challenges about investing in the Southern sector is that if you invest in North Dallas, typically you can get about 80% funded. In the Southern sector, you get about 60% funded. So you have this gap that most developers are trying to manage through. Our task is that we try to assist those developers by providing capital so they can do the development. We welcome the partnership of the business community, investors, and the community at large to help us to continue to stimulate growth in the Southern sector.